up, Active Fam? All right, so I know I haven't been very active on the vlogs lately, so I do apologize. There's a very good reason for my absence. It's basically comes down to having to work a lot of hours on uh, the ABW store, but I just checked in with uh, our shipping container freight company, and they've just confirmed that we have 90 cartons or boxes being shipped to Australia this week, which means it should land in the first week of November. So 90 boxes of everything from new men's singlets and t-shirts and joggers to the entire women's range of leggings, bras, singlets, booty shorts, everything. Been working really hard over the last six months to get everything organized and I'm really happy to say that it's finally on its way and we're only going to be going up from here. So we've got some pretty exciting stuff coming up in the next couple of months, but we do have a special guest coming into ABW to train with me today. Anyway, got to finish up training my son, Terry Ching. All right, let's go. Show him how it's done, baby. We're doing Smith Machine lunges here. So single leg, one, two. Knee just about to hit the floor. Staying a little bit upright, hitting the top end of the quad. 15 reps each side, no stopping. Yuki, what are you doing, baby? Having a little nap, are ya? All right, I wanna show you a really cool feature that the Apple Watch has just released. So they've got the update now, which means even if you've got one of the older Apple Watches, you can still use this walkie-talkie feature. If I can get it to concentrate, yep, good, there we go. All right, so what you do is just update your watch and you can do a walkie-talkie feature. So it doesn't even have to be within range, like you literally just use your 3G or 4G and um, you can talk to anyone around the world. Oh. Alright guys, so I'm just having my car powder shake. Got two scoops of glycoject, five grams of creatine, and five grams of glutamine. This is something that I'll have every single workout. <coughs> Alright, as I was saying, every single workout, especially when I'm bulking, I make sure I have the car powder shake about 20 minutes just before training. Then I'll have my pre workout about five minutes before training, and then I'm ready to go. So today's workout, we're going to be doing a little bit of back. Um, Eugene's going to teach me a few things that he's been putting on his Instagram, which I messaged him about, the snatch grip deadlifts. So before we get started on this session, I'm going to change my shoes real quick because these bad boys are like slippers. They're good for like everyday walking around and casual wear, but for training in, especially back, when you need to do a lot of stabilizing, hey, just don't cut it. So I've got my Metcons. These are actually my leg day shoes, but they're pretty good for back day as well. Anyway, quickly swap these over. You ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Yes, good girl. Oh, this is what we're going to be doing today. Snatch grip deadlifts with really slow eccentrics. Ready? Look at this slow load. Oh, shit. Before the big man gets here, let me just run you through a little bit of background on Coach Eugene Teo on Instagram. So myself and Eugene actually went to high school together and we finished in 2008, which is nearly 10 years ago. Um, ever since, Eugene's been doing his own style of training um, and he's been building up a really big following around the world. He's actually just been traveling the world doing seminars um, and running through workshops. If you're interested, you can check out his uh, Instagram page, at Coach Eugene Teo. But he is by far one of the most knowledgeable people that I know. Saying that, Eugene does have a background in bodybuilding, so we both actually used to compete. He's actually the one that got me into bodybuilding. So when I first started, he was like, I'm thinking about doing my first show. I think you should just come along to one of my training sessions with my coach and um, just see how you go, to get him to have a look at you. And I was like, yeah, sweet, I'm down. You know, so that's basically how I started. I started training with him and his coach. And then we both just started to do the teenage division, then junior division, and just slowly worked our way up. So Eugene just got here and we're about to hit a back session. Like I said to you guys earlier, we're gonna start, are we gonna start with the deadlifts? The snatch grip deadlifts. Yeah. <laughs> no, starting or not? Yeah. yeah, okay, first exercise, snatch grip deadlifts. This is the very first time that I'm doing this, so 
you know. Anyway, I hooked him up with one of the new bulk t-shirts. So this is the blue Pretty. ABW bulk t-shirt. Fits pretty good, huh? I already spilled shit on it, I'm sorry. <laughs> but anyway, your typical deadlift. You're right in here, nice and tight, lifting straight up. When you take this snatch grip, which is like your nose picking finger, out to that outer ring of the barbell, you're increasing the stretch here through these lower lat fibers around your, not necessarily erectors, but this lower lat region. If you want to get all technical, it's called the thoracolumbar fascia. That's probably like the only smart word I really know, <laughs> because it sounds really, really cool. <laughs> but it's your thoracic spine, your lumbar spine, the fascia that bundles that shit together. That's what's getting opened out when you take a wider grip. So when you open that shit out, it forces that area to contract a lot harder to stabilize and support your spine. That's one thing of it. The other part of it is your upper back. When you open shit out here into this snatch grip, that mid-back rhomboid thoracic area, that stretches out too. And that gets, puts it into a really, really good position to be hanging on for dear life so you don't lose your spine, you don't lose your scapula. Because that weight is now pulling you forwards a lot more. So you gotta work hard in that upper back area to keep everything on. All right, let's have a look. Wide grip, lock that bar back, and push away. Now, when you take that grip, you wanna be careful that you don't grab it too wide or too narrow, or you're gonna chop your dick off. <laughs> so, for me, it's no speaking finger on the ring, so it hits right above my dick. But, I don't know where your dick sits. <laughs> All right, I'll give it a go. Try not to chop my dick off. Here we go. That's tip number one. Okay, don't lose your dick, Eddie. Oh, you're just above. <laughs> just above, yeah. Are we doing really slow eccentric? Yeah, do a slow eccentric. So what we're really aiming for as he does this, this region right here has been spread apart a little bit more. He's in a slightly rounded position in his upper back because of that wider grip. Now all this stuff up through this, I call this the, uh, the rear delt shelf. Because from rear delt to rear delt, that region now has to work a lot harder to stabilize the spine and stabilize the scapula against the weight. Nice Eddie. And here we go, a slow eccentric to really focus on keeping that tension in those areas through the upper back. Oh. All right, so this is a what third or fourth set. We're just going to start increasing it by five kilos each set, and we're going to be supersetting this with the lat pull down. So nothing too crazy yet. Work our way up to about 100 kilos, he reckons. Now, just take note, guys. This is not necessarily about moving heavy weight. This is more about activating and keeping it nice and strict. Look at that precision. Pulling the shoulder blades down first, then following with the bar. How many reps, bro? Um, about that many. Yeah, good. Probably Bell's eight. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. 90 kilos. Second last set. Keeping that bar nice and close to the shins as you go down. Holding onto that air. Make sure you don't be breathe in and out as you're lowering the weight down or you fuck your shit up. Fuck your shit up! <laughs> Here we go. Keep it tight. Bang, just tapping it. Going straight back up. That's now, one thing when you start to get the heavy weights is you probably do want to use straps. Even if you are an absolute machine who can handle gripping the bar normally. The wide grip makes a huge difference in terms of uh, the stress on your grip. And you don't want to be worrying about that. So again, this grip here, opening up this section of the back and these lower lat fibers. That's what's taking the grunt of the weights right now to stabilize the, uh, the spine with that wider grip. There you go, Eddie. Perfect form. Yes. Ooh. Straight into the lap pull down. So I really like to pair a lot of compressive work like deadlifting with some kind of vertical traction or decompressive type of work. One thing, it feels fantastic on the lats 
once you've gone and squished everything down, you can now open it all back up. But I think the same applies to your spine. When you put it through a lot of compressive forces over time, it's really good to open everything back up to restore a lot of joint mobility and to keep your body healthy. Hitting about eight-ish reps on this as well. It's not about destroying yourself at this point. The deadlifts work these exact same lower lat and mid-back regions isometrically. So they've already had a fair bit of time under tension. Now it's just about flushing everything out. How's that, Eddie? Oh, it's like cardio. <laughs> <laughs> Two blues. Here we go. Nice and tight. Dick. <laughs> yeah, watch your dick, fam. Nice and smooth. Big breath at the top. Keep everything tight on the way down. There we are. Keeping that bar moving up and down in a straight line, close to the body. Gentle tap on the ground, pull straight back again. There we go. Nice. Woo! Pull downs, last one. There we go, stretch and squeeze. Stretch. There we go. And Eddie can never resist a good pump. He's got to keep going, keep going, keep going. <laughs> oh, you gotta add those force reps in, bro. <laughs> all about the force reps. I'm all about them. All right, so our next movement is targeting our lower lats. Now this is a slight variation of one of Eugene's movements that I kind of stole and then manipulated a little bit. <laughs> so his version is called the gentleman's row. You actually have your feet the opposite way to what they are now. So like this. And that's going to help you bunch up your lower lat because you're bringing your hip closer to your shoulder. So as he pulls up, obviously these two joints are coming closer together, which is going to give you a deeper contraction. When you do it the regular way, we're still keeping our hands supinated um, and we're not reaching all the way to the floor. All right, swap sides, huge. Oh, the key to this exercise is basically to keep as much tension on the lower lats where your shoulder blades are so you don't want to fully stretch towards the bottom and then as you come back up you want to pull your shoulder all the way up and into the midline of the body so imagine this is where your spine is you're pulling that shoulder up and in so you're contracting all of this area here and bunching up that lower lat he's going to do 10 pause reps with that squeeze at the top then at the end of the set you're going to do 5 pump reps there you go Come on, huge. Let's go. Four strips now. Beautiful. Burn them out. Easy. It hurts, huh? That's a double set on that side, man. <laughs> two sets on that side. So, make sure when you do this exercise, you don't put your hands here. You want to put your forearm on there so that you're nice and stable. Lean up against the bench. Have a little bit of a bend through your elbow. Reach down towards the floor, but keep that elbow bent a little bit. That's gonna keep your shoulder blade flared out so that the lat takes all the work. If you fully extend your arm down like this, you're gonna end up pulling through your redoubt and your shoulder and your trap first. So just keep the arm a little bit bent. Get the stretch. Pull up and hold. Ah. Ooh, stretch and squeeze. Nice. There we go. That's crazy, I didn't even know what the fuck muscle that is over there. Some kind of rotator cuff thingamajig. There we go. And then five force reps. Pump them out, pump them out. Keeping that same slightly bent elbow. Initiating from the lat. Yeah, don't rush those last five reps, okay? Even though they're meant to be force reps, if you go too quick, you're going to end up just fully extending that arm, all right? Take your time as you're lowering it down, but you're just not holding it at the top. That's the only difference. I'm just trying to talk for a little bit longer. So what the fuck are you waiting for, man? You made me go three sets. <laughs> all right. It's interesting because, like, you see most people doing an exercise, and if they were not fully straighten the elbow, you'd think, oh my god, that guy's not doing full range of motion. He's going to snap something or he's doing it wrong. But the thing is, if you've got a purpose behind why you keep the elbow slightly bent, 
to keep the constant tension coming from the lat and to keep the first pull initiating from here, not from the elbow, that's a very, very good reason to keep that elbow slightly bent. It's all about the lat here. We don't want to row with rear delta upper trap or even biceps. Start to the lat. Let's go, Eddie. Stretch that out. Pulling from here, right there. Right there. Wrapping around. Gorilla noises. There we go. Oh. Nice. Oh, yep. That's a big boom. All right, ABW fam. It's time to look at some more triceps work. We're on the rope now. Now, Eddie's gonna take a couple of steps back. Different to the slightly typical row. So what's happening here is look at the, the line of that cable there. Now when he pushes down, it lines up a lot more with his triceps as opposed to when he would have been a little bit closer in towards the, uh, the machine. So at the top here, when his elbow's bent, there is still load pulling his arms that away, that way there, which forces this upper armpit long head region to stabilize isometrically to keep pulling him that aways. That's why I like to step back, whereas if you were closer in towards the machine, the line of pulls going vertically which wouldn't stress out that upper armpit meaty chunk of whatever the fuck you call that hamburger meat as, as much. Once you knocked out your reps there, what we're gonna do to extend the set further is keep the elbows bent now, and all we're gonna do is push from the shoulder joint forwards and pull back. So it almost looks like a row or like a stiff arm pull down. Yeah, push as far back as you can, keeping the elbows bent. Keep the elbows bent still, yeah, elbows bent. So what this does, it looks like a lat exercise and it kind of is. But it's really thinking about pulling from the triceps. The triceps share a lot of the same roles as the lats at the shoulder blade and at the shoulder joints. So right now, because we've already woken up that long head, it is predominantly working through that range of motion to completely toast the triceps. Keep going, Eddie. As you tire out more, bend the elbows more. Makes it easier. To make it even more disgusting and less lats, crunch your abs and hunch your back out even more. There you go. Now keep pulling. Little baby reps. There you go. Little baby reps. There you go, just there, just to there. There, that's it, that's it. Keep going, keep going. Keep going. So the elbow stays bent now, it's just the shoulder joint moves up and down. Absolutely disgusting. But you see everything up through the armpit here, all this rotator cuff, lat, triceps, it's all integrating and squishing up and tying together. That is some serious pump, man. <laughs> like right up in here. Yeah, it's right a high pump. There. There's nothing near the elbow, it's all up in the armpit. Yeah, like that. That's like doing yeah. dips. Yeah. I thought dips was the only movement that really hits that corner up there, but yeah. wow. That pull. Yeah. The short ones. That's what the short, really it's this, this short one. It's that short little pull. That's what kills it the most. Yeah. Now, it's a good way for people to train if they've got um, elbow pain. The reason why we don't stay so close is if I'm in this position here, when I get this stretch, the weight's pulling me up, and that's the only way it's going to go. Whereas when I'm stepping back further and further, now I'm being pulled forwards, which forces my whole long head of the triceps, that little quadrant up there, to pull back the entire time to keep my elbow to my side. That's why we stay back here as opposed to forwards. Just for a little variation. You know, the other way is not wrong, but this yeah. is... Yeah, I think that's an important note. What we're trying to target here is the long head of the tricep. If you are trying to target the short head, you can stand closer. That's obviously just going to work the side portion of your arm, which some people really need to focus on doing a little bit more. But if you're trying to hit the main chunk of the tricep, where it originates up in the armpit and then inserts down to your elbow, this kind of work is going to work the tricep as a whole. So you can see that Eugene's uh, uh, elbows are going up just a slight at the top of the movement, and he's pulling it back down, but really focus on squeezing that corner right in there. All right, now he's keeping the elbows bent, he's pulling backwards, he's keeping that tension right in the armpit there. Now he's still focusing, trying to pull through the triceps more so than the lats. It's a very short range, this one. Is that for a scrunched up face, huh? 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 I'm not the only one that does it. Yeah. There we go. Pump it now, pump it. The most important bit about this one I found is that you've got to really punch over like that, yeah. tuck your chin down. 
punch keeps the lats out of it as much as possible. It just helps to think about pulling that rope down in front of you, not just in towards your, uh, your waist. That keeps the lats out of it as much as possible, but it still allows the lats to assist a little bit to help out that long head. There we go, keep going. Tuck the elbows in close to your sides. Think elbows to ears. That's gonna, yeah, that's disgusting, isn't it? Here you go, elbows to ears. Nice. Oh. So without even having doing any push downs or any dips, my triceps feel more pumped than ever. Like just that from here ball. all the way down. It's not easy to work the tricep through that full range. Usually most movements will do one or the other, either hit the top or hit the bottom. But this is like a full range all the way from the shoulder joint to the elbow. Love it. Delicious. Anyway, no, it's actually really important that I think when it comes to training, especially arms, frequency is key. You want to hit them as much as possible. So if we're going to throw in little bits more frequently in the week, they're going to have more stimulus for growth. Now we choose these movements specifically because it's very, very light, but it still induces the big pump in the triceps. It's very good for your joints. You don't get anything that we've done so far doesn't bash up the elbows. They help to tie in this long head and it works in unison with the lats. So everything blends together very nicely. Whereas if you think about like your typical close grip bench press, or even like a close, when you're standing close to the bar push down, that doesn't demand the lats to work as hard. So that would still be a good thing to do, but on a separate day. Mm. Save your dips, save your close grip pressing, save um, your, close, your closer um, push downs for the separate arm day. So you could do dips today as well, but probably be too fried from all the lat work to be able to do dips properly. Mm. So that's, that's for day two. All right, post-workout shake time. Gonna have one and a half scoops of this rule number one. This is their whey blend, and it's the chocolate peanut butter flavor. This shit tastes so good. One, and a bit, maybe that much. I'm also gonna add in the usual glutamine. So five grams before my workout and five grams after. Shake and bake, baby. All right guys, that's the end of today's video. Hope you enjoyed that workout with myself and Eugene. If you did, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the Active Fam if you haven't already. But anyway, that's it for now guys. We'll see you in the next video. Peace out Active Fam. I don't wanna die for them to miss me. Yes, I see the things that they wishing on me.